Today's student, they love luxury, disrespect elders, chatter in the place of exercise, contradict their parents, terrorize their teachers. That right there just summarizes today's student. That was said by none other than Socrates. So 400 years before Jesus Christ was born, the elders were complaining about this year's generation. So whether it was 10 years ago when they were eating Tide Pods, and we were like, oh man, we are doomed. When these kids grow up, we are doomed. Or now, what is it, the, the one chip challenge? Mm -hmm. It's like the equivalent of getting pepper sprayed in the face. So when kids grow up, this is their brains are developing from the moment of conception until age 25. So when they make mistakes, so our theme these two days is going to be teach. We teach. When they make mistakes, we teach as opposed to punish. And so just, just knowing that even, even old Socrates, when the youth of his time, they're going to make mistakes. The elders are always complaining about the youth of today. And so we're going to build out over these two days these uh, supports to teach students what we expect. So our purpose is to help prepare independent, functioning, and empathic members in our community. No matter what grade level we are working with, ultimately we are giving them those life skills that they need for, for really to be successful in school and beyond. Can I get a thumbs up if you agree with that? That that is ultimately what we are working on? Absol absolutely. And so with that said, I just want to check in to make sure we're on the same page and um, want to want to see if we're in agreement, okay, with uh, with a couple of these statements here, a few of these statements. Can you give me a thumbs up if if, uh, um, if you agree that every, you know, we, we would love it if all students would demonstrate academic and social behaviors like we want in school. Can you go ahead and give me a thumbs up? Wouldn't that be great? If, if they were all engaging, absolutely. Do you agree that some students are gonna have more setbacks than others with academic and social behaviors? Can I get, you could even nod. You could nod if we're still, if it's still early. <laughs> Thumbs up, okay. And can we agree that, look, even though, um, you know, we've been back in school for a little bit, that there are some long lasting impact and effects from the pandemic on student behavior. Can you agree? Absolutely. And then this one I don't have written down, but you, you know, just think about this statement. Do you know any educators in the last few years that haven't wanted to be in education anymore? And blink twice if it's you, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Especially if you're sitting by your admin, you, it's not you. But but this is but this is real, and we have two choices here. Okay, we could be stuck in kind of that fixed mindset of this is where we're at, and there's nothing we could do. We can't control the parents. We can't control the scenario. We could be stuck in that fixed mindset around behavior, or we could really shift to a growth mindset around behavior. We know our current state. And now as a team, we need to rally and we need to adjust and we and we need to be with our, what our students and our school and our community needs now. And that's what we're shooting. That's what we're shooting for here as we're gonna give you the tools and resources to help you. But a couple couple more more things here, because we wanna make sure we're on the same page around the context of this work, what we're you know, what we're even here to do, and really the why. So we have to acknowledge our current state, and this is nation, this, this is nationwide, and, and the, these stats have stayed pretty consistent over the last few years. So we have some images just to capture our current state and the impact that has on academic and social behaviors of students, uh, but you know your students more than anyone so you think about, you know, which one of these can you relate to and why you're doing this work. So the first picture really leans towards uh, the stats around depression and anxiety and specifically suicide rates, which keeps us up at night. Uh, so there's absolutely been an increase 
in all of those areas and specifically suicide rates in lower grade levels between the age of 10 and 14 years old, which is heartbreaking, heartbreaking. Um, the second picture uh, depicts trauma and the impact of trauma. Trauma is real. Trauma does not discrimi uh, discriminate. There is no specific zip code or it's only these kids who have traumatic experiences. Uh, trauma impacts learning, attention, mood, all of those things um, that are really important to be present in school. Social media is real and it is not good um, when, you know, used uh, excessively. Look at um, the impact it has on self-image, attention span, self-confidence in kids, and to be honest, also adults. Exclusionary practices or the sense of students not feeling like they belong in school is real and it is increased and it impacts, impacts schools every day. If students are struggling also academically, they're going to demonstrate some challenges behaviorally, whether they are bored out of their mind or they are struggling. There, there are going to be those behaviors and they may be apathetic instead of acting out, but, but they're present in our schools. And then, of course, uh, families going through some tough times, losing jobs, domestic violence, uh, they're needing, needing a place to stay. These are all impacting our students. I would say that the, the new pandemic is anxiety, depression, and substance abuse. Um, the, the, the newest research that has now come out uh, post-pandemic, there's been a 30% increase of anxiety and depression is more than double. So our kids are hurting and oftentimes the way that they demonstrate that they're hurting or show us that they're hurting is through their behavior. And so although behavior, yes, is extremely frustrating, we need to be able to look past that and see that, that student who's, who themselves are struggling. And I also want to add something here that, you know, although we're showing the student stats right now, this is also similar for the adults, the adults serving our students. So we also have to be cognizant that, look, we have adults, and, and I want to recognize some in this room right now that are go going through some really tough times and trying to be present and mindful and, and engaged in learning. Um, so we have to acknowledge this current state. And most importantly, what we just want you to know right now is look, there's absolutely students that are repeatedly getting in trouble, but there's also students hurting in other ways where, you know, they're excluded, they're suffering anxiety with uh, anxiety and depression impacting they're learning. So just look at when we're talking behavior, we're talking about both, okay? So now, um, whether you're gonna reflect with someone next to you if you're in the same room, whether you're gonna independently reflect, however you wanna do this, but we ask you to please engage in, in the reflection because all of these are set up for a reason as we're building the case, okay? So I just wanna start with a, with a question. If a student is struggling with academic content in your classroom or in your school, what do, what, what do we do? What is, our, um, what is our typical response? So about, about 30 seconds, whether you're self-reflecting or you're talking to someone right next to you, go ahead and engage in that conversation. You're also welcome to drop it in the chat, whatever way works for you, about 30 seconds. 